Hello all. So now we are moving on to the fifth module, the syllabus of which is given here. In this lecture, we will be mainly seeing the concept of space vector pulse width modulation or SVPWM. In the last lecture, we had seen the working of a three phase voltage source inverter. So there we had seen at a time the switches of the same phase or same leg will not be turned on together. That is S1 and S4 will not be on together. S3 and S6 similarly S5 and S2 will not be turned on together. So this concept leads to a conclusion that is if S1 is on I automatically know that S4 is off. So therefore if I know the switching states of the upper three switches that is S1, S3 and S5 automatically the state of the lower three switches is known. Switching state means whether a switch is on or off. This leads to another conclusion that is only three variables are required to represent the state of the six switches. So the three variables are used to represent the state of the upper switches automatically you know what is the state of the lower switches. So normally 1 is used to represent an on switch and 0 is used to represent an off switch. For example 1 1 0 means S1 and S3 is on 0 means S5 is off naturally S2 is on. So 1 1 0 means S1 S3 and S2 is on. Since we are using three variables, altogether we have 2 raised to 3 switching states or 8 switching states are possible which can be represented using the three variables. Consider the switching state 1 0 0 that is S1 S2 and S6 is conducting now. So based on this we have the equivalent circuit as shown here. Now using Ohm's law you can find out the voltage across each phase VAN, VBN and VCN. We have already seen this in the last lecture. So similarly for all the 8 switching states you can find out the value of the 3 phase voltages and it is tabulated here for your reference. Now that you have an idea of the working of a three phase voltage source inverter and the eight switching states possible, we can move on to space vector pulse width modulation or SVPWM which is similar to a sine PWM method. It is a method used to generate the pulses for the six switches of an inverter. But compared to sine PWM, this is more of a mathematical approach. So before we move on to the algorithm, first we will see what is a space vector. So we have already found out the value of the three phase voltages for the 6, 8 switching states. Now I am going to represent those phase voltages in phasor form. So first I have VAN, I am taking phase A voltage as reference. So VAN along the x-axis then VBN 120 degree away and then comes VCN. So you can see the three voltages are 120 degree apart. Now I am going to resolve the three voltages along x and y directions. So first I resolve the three voltages along the x direction as Vx. So you know how to resolve the three vectors along x-axis. So Vx will be equal to the cosine component of VAN, VBN and VCN along the x-direction. So that will be VAN cos 0 plus VBN cos 120 plus VCN cos 240. So that will come to VAN minus half VBN plus VCN. Now you know that in a balanced three phase system the instantaneous sum of the three voltages is always zero that is VAN plus VBN plus VCN is always equal to zero. 
So from that VB plus VC sorry VBN plus VCN is equal to minus VAN. So using that concept here I get Vx is equal to 3 by 2 times VAN. Similarly I am going to resolve the 3 voltages along the y axis to get Vy. So Vy will be equal to the same equation in terms of sign. So I get the value as root 3 by 2 times Vbn minus Vcn. So these two equations Vx equal to 3 by 2 VAN and Vy equal to root 3 by 2 Vbn minus Vcn is important. We will be using it in the later stages. So once I get the x and y axis components Vx and Vy, the resultant of Vx and Vy is represented as a phasor Vs making an angle theta with the horizontal. So this vector or phasor Vs is known as the space vector. The magnitude of which is given as root of Vx square plus Vy square and the angle theta is tan inverse Vy by Vx. So that is the space vector Vs with, with the magnitude and angle theta. So these two equations are again important. We will be using it later. So therefore you can see the space vector modulation method is treating the inverter, the three phase inverter as a single unit or we have converted the three phase voltages VAN, VBN and VCN into a single space vector or a voltage Vs which is having a constant magnitude and it is rotating at a speed of omega radians per second where theta is equal to omega into T. So using these formulas we can evaluate the magnitude and angle of the space vector for each of the eight switching states. So here we are going to evaluate the space vector both magnitude and angle for three switching states 100, 101 and 110. So consider the first switching state 100. If you refer to the table in slide number 3 we have already calculated the phase voltages for the eight switching states. So from that table the value of VAN, VBN and VCN can be determined. So VAN is found to be 2 by 3 VDC and VBN and VCN is minus 1 by 3 VDC. So once you get the three phase voltages you can find the value of Vx and Vy using the formula which you have seen already. So Vx is VDC and Vy you get it as 0. Once you get Vx and Vy you can find the magnitude of the space vector as root of Vx square plus Vy square so it comes to VDC and the angle made with the horizontal theta comes to 0. So the space vector corresponding to the switching state 1 0 0 is VDC angle 0. The magnitude is VDC angle is 0. Similarly you can find the space vector for 1 0 1 in the same approach. First find out the phase voltages VAN, VBN and VCN from the table. Using the formula calculate Vx and Vy. Once you get Vx and Vy find the magnitude of the space vector and the angle. So in this switching state 101 you get the magnitude as again Vdc. The angle now becomes either you will get minus 60 or 300 both are same. So therefore now the space vector for the switching state 101 is Vdc angle minus 60. We got the magnitude as VDC and the angle is minus 60. Similarly for 110 the same approach can be used and you will get the space vector to be VDC angle 60. Magnitude is VDC makes an angle 60 with the horizontal. So keep in mind these three values for the three switching states 100, 101 and 110. For the first one, you can see for all the three, the magnitude remains same as VDC. The angle changes from 0, minus 60 and plus 60. Now consider the switching state 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0 means the upper three switches are off or 
the lower three switches are on that is s2 s4 and s6 is on similarly 1 1 1 means the upper three switches s1 s3 and s5 is on in either of these switching states if you calculate the space vector you will get the magnitude and angle to be zero that is zero angle zero therefore if i represent this space vector as a phaser it will be converted into a single dot in free space because the magnitude as well as angle is zero so corresponding to zero 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 i am representing that space vector as v zero and for one 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 i am representing the corresponding space vector as v seven now the next switching state that is one zero zero we had calculated the space vector to be vdc angle zero so now representing this space vector in phasor form i have a phasor making an angle zero with the horizontal and the magnitude or length of that phasor is vdc i am representing that as v1 corresponding to switching state 100 similarly the next one we had evaluated 110 so for 110 the magnitude is vdc but the angle is 60 so in phasor form again i have a vector of length vdc but making an angle 60 with the horizontal so corresponding to 110 the space vector is labeled as v2 and the last one we had calculated was 101 so there we got the angle as minus 60 magnitude is still the same vdc so in phasor form it comes to a vector making an angle minus 60 with the horizontal and the corresponding space vector i am representing it as v6 so once you get these three phases that is corresponding to 100 110 and 101 the remaining three switching states can be easily computed you need not go for that detailed calculation consider 100 so the complement of 100 is 011 consider the switching state 100 the complementary switching state is 011 so the magnitude of that corresponding space vector will be same vdc the angle will be plus 180 or corresponding to 011 it is vdc angle 180 so in phasor form it will be a vector which is 180 degree away from v1 so i am labeling it as v4 corresponding to 011 similarly for 110 the vector was making an angle 60 degree with the horizontal and we had labeled it as v2 so the complementary switching state that is 001 again magnitude is same but it is 180 degree apart so it makes an angle 240 with the horizontal and i have the vector to be represented as v5 similarly the last one 101 was represented as v6 making an angle 60 degree with the horizontal the complementary switching state that is 010 will make an angle of 120 degree that is minus 60 plus 180 which comes to vdc angle 120 so that is the last space vector which is represented as v3 so here the first two vectors that is v0 and v7 corresponding to the switching states 000 and 111 is having a magnitude of 0 hence they are known as null vectors and the remaining six vectors corresponding to switching states 100 to 010 is having a magnitude of vdc hence they are known as active vectors now this resulting diagram is known as space vector diagram it is actually a representation of the position that is going to be attained by the space vector for any of the eight switching states that is if the switching state of the inverter is 100 the space vector will be along v1 if the switching state is 010 the space vector will be along v3 similarly if it is 011 the space vector will be along v4 so the eight discrete positions attained by the space vector corresponding to the eight switching states 
is shown as a phasor diagram which is known as the space vector diagram. If you look at the space vector diagram, you can see the six vectors V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6 are 60 degree apart. So all together you, they have, there are six sectors. The first sector is formed by V1 and V2 which is 60 degree wide. The second sector between V2 and V3. The next one between V3 and V4. So all together the space vector diagram has six sectors. So it is also known as sector diagram. If you recollect the output voltage waveform of a three-phase voltage source inverter, you can see the three-phase voltages is having a more or less square or stepped waveform. It is not a sinusoidal one. But in actual uh, practice, the desired waveform at the output of an inverter is sinusoidal. So that means if VAN, VBN and VCN are sinusoidal, naturally the space vector Vs will also be a sinusoidal voltage or the desired waveform is sinusoidal. So that means the locus of the space vector is a circle because it is a sinusoidal vector. So you can see that the space vector Vs attains positions other than these eight discrete positions in one rotation that is it attains position in between these eight voltage vectors so we know how to generate the space vector if it is along any of these eight discrete positions for example if vs is along the direction of v4 we know that the switching state to be applied is 0 1 1 if vs is along v2 the switching state to be applied is 1 1 0 but what about the other positions that is between any of these voltage vectors how to generate the space vector if it attains positions in between the eight voltage vectors so that is the main concept of space vector pw Consider Vs, the space vector is now lying in sector 1 that is between V1 and V2. It is making an angle theta with the horizontal. So the principle is Vs is generated by applying V1 for T1 seconds, V2 for T2 seconds and V0 or V7 the null vector for Tz seconds. This is known as volt second balance principle that is a space vector Vs will be present for a total switching time Ts. So Vs into Ts is equal to V1 for T1 seconds plus V2 for T2 seconds and the remaining time V0 or V7 for Tz seconds. Now resolving this equation along the x-axis that is finding the components of V1, V2 and Vs along x-axis. So on the left hand side it will be the component of Vs along x is Vs cos theta into Ts is equal to component of V1 along x-axis that is V1 cos 0 into T1 plus the component of V2 along x-axis that is V2 cos 60 into T2. The last term here that is V0 or V7 since its magnitude is 0 it is a null vector so the magnitude is 0 therefore the last term will be neglected or it becomes 0. So the equation will now reduce to V1 cos 0 T1 plus V2 cos 60 into T2. So we had seen earlier the magnitude of all the active vectors is Vdc. Therefore the equation is Vdc into T1 plus T2 by 2. So let's mark that equation as equation number 1. Similarly resolve along the y axis. So Vs sin theta into Ts is equal to V1 sin 0 T1 plus V2 sin 60 T2. So that will come to root 3 by 2 Vdc into T2 where Vdc is the magnitude of the voltage vectors V1 and V2. So from equation number 2 I can find the value of the time T2 that is the time for which the vector V2 is to be applied. So T2 comes to 2 by root 3 Vs by Vdc into Ts into sin theta. Substituting for T2 in equation number 1 I will get the value for T1. It comes to 2 by root 3 Vs by Vdc Ts into sin 60 minus theta. So once you get T1 and T2, 
we can calculate the value of Tz that is the time for which you have to apply the null vector V0 or V7. So if the total switching time is Ts, T1 plus T2 plus Tz is equal to Ts. So if you know T1 and T2, I can calculate the time Tz which is Ts minus T1 plus T2. So now we have calculated the time for which the active vectors should be applied to generate Vs if it is lying in sector 1. That is if the voltage vector Vs, the space vector Vs, if it is lying in sector 1, that is between V1 and V2, what is the time for which you have to apply V1 and V2 so as to generate the required space vector Vs. So once you get T1 and T2 and Tz, you can generate the switching pulses. So based on the value of T1, T2 that we have calculated, now we will draw the switching pulse waveform. So here I have the three axes for the three upper switches S1, S3 and S5. I am going to draw the switching pulse waveform. So first I am dividing the time axis into several durations. So here you can see I followed a particular pattern that is the first section is having a duration of T Z by 4 followed by another duration of T1 by 2 then T2 by 2 again T Z by 2 T2 by 2 T1 by 2 and T Z by 4. Several such patterns are available normally we go for this pattern. So here why we are going for this pattern is here you can see the total time for which V1 is up, should be applied was calculated as T1 in a total switching time Ts. So here I have split that time T1 into T1 by 2 and T1 by 2 so that the total time adds up to T1. T1 by 2 plus T1 by 2 is T1. Similarly we had calculated that V2 should be applied for a total time T2 in one switching period. I have split T2 into T2 by 2 and T2 by 2. Similarly, the null vector V0 or V7 has to be applied for a total time Tz. So that has been split into Tz by 2 and Tz by 4 and Tz by 4 so that the sum of these three will come to Tz. So the only thing you have to keep in mind is the total time should remain constant. That is, that is if V1 is to be applied for T1 seconds, you can split T1 into several durations but only thing is it should add up to T1. Similarly for the other vectors. And then you arrange it in such a pattern so that at a time only one of the three phases will undergo a switching. It will be more clear after you draw the pulses. So here the first duration is Tz by 4. So Tz means I have to apply null vector that is V0 or V7. So I am going to apply V0 that is 0, 0, 0 for a time Tz by 4. The next time duration is T1 by 2. So T1 means we have to apply V1 which is 1, 0, 0. The next is T2 that means we have to apply V2. Again Tz so you apply you can apply V0 or V7. Here we are going for V7. Why we chose V7 we will see later. Again next is T2. So you apply V2. Next is T1. You apply T1. Sorry V1. Again next is Tz. So you apply V0 or V7. Here we have chosen V0. Now using this much information we will see how to draw the pulses. So the first section I have to apply V0 or 0, 0, 0. That means all the three upper switches must be off. So the pulse waveform will be 0, 0, 0 for the three upper switches S1, S3 and S5. Next is T1 by 2. I have to apply 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0 means S1 is on, S3 and S5 is off. So the pulse waveform goes high for S1. It still remains 0 for S3 and S5. The next time duration I have to apply V2 that is 1 1 0. So the switches conducting will be S1, S3 and S5. So S1 still remains on, S3 goes high, S5 is still off. Now the next 
it is Tz. So here we have chosen the null vector V7 that is all the three upper switches should be on. So S1 is already on, it remains on, S3 is still on, S5 will go on in the next section. Again the next is 110 so that means S5 should turn off. So you can see at this point S5 goes off. In the next section S3 should be turned off. So S1 still remains on, S3 and S5 is off now. And in the last section all the three switches are again off. So here this is the pulse pattern you are going to apply for the three upper switches if the voltage vector Vs is lying in sector 1 for one switching period Ts. So here if you closely look at the waveform you can see at this point after Tz by 4 S1 is undergoing a switching the other two phases are remaining constant. Again in the next section at this point you can see only S3 is undergoing a transition the other two phases are remaining constant. Similarly in the next section S5 is undergoing a transition S1 S3 remains in the same state. So that is why we are going for such a pattern that is Tz by 4, T1 by 2, T2 by 2 etc. So that at a time only one of the three phases will undergo a transition. The reason for choosing this is if only one phase undergoes a transition the switching losses can be minimized. That is why we are going for this type of pattern. So similarly if the space vector Vs is lying in sector 2 that is between V2 and V3 the same principle that is Vs can be generated by applying V2 for T2 seconds, V3 for T3 seconds and V0 or V7 for Tz seconds. So using the same procedure you resolve uh, the vectors and find out the magnitude of T3 and T2. After that place the uh, voltage vectors in a particular pattern as we saw in the previous sector and again uh, to minimize the losses we have followed this pattern here and if in the first section it is Tz by 4 so you apply V0 then followed by V3, V2 again null vector V7, V2, V3 and V0 and by looking at the uh, vector switching states you can draw the pulse waveform. So here the first null vector we chose was V0 that is 0 0 0 in the second state we go for null vector V7 that is 1 1 1. So why it is because consider that in this section that is at Tz by 2 for a duration of Tz by 2 if I am choosing the null vector to be 0 0 0 you can see that the switch S5 will remain off during the entire switching period. So that is why we are going for V7 here instead of V0 itself or the other way around consider that initially I am applying V7 here and here also I am applying V7. So then what happens is S5 will remain on throughout the switching cycle a transition will not take place. So that is why starting we choose V0 and in between go, we go for V7 and again come back to V0. So in a similar manner for each sector you calculate what is the time for which each corresponding vectors should be applied to generate the space vector and then you can place the voltage vectors in this particular pattern and apply it so as to generate the space vector. In a similar manner you can draw the pulses for all the six sectors and with this we come to the end of this lecture. The remaining part of fifth module we will cover in the coming lectures. Thank you.